Hi everyone, join us today as we make these beautiful Tree of Life wire wrap sun catchers out of old bracelets. I'm Tanner, and this is my wife Amy. If you haven't seen our channel before, Amy and I are full-time artists and crafters who make a wide variety of items using all kinds of different mediums. You could use today's project as something for yourself, something as a gift, or something to sell. For those interested, the Tree of Life is a popular symbol with many different meanings, and it's used in multiple cultures and religions. Some of the meanings it has can be how a family grows over generations, including its ancestry. It can also mean harmony and balance and a connection between heaven and earth. Often the tree is depicted with its roots going downwards and outwards, and its branches going upwards and outwards. While it has been associated with many myths and religions, it is also a beautiful subject matter for anyone who loves nature. Sun catchers are decorations you can display in just about any window to catch the sun. When the sun hits the crystals or beads, it can send reflections and rainbows around the room. While you can use any type of crystals and beads that you like, the clear crystals tend to create the most rainbows. If you're looking to make a more basic or simple uh, sun catcher, this one's made out of just an old necklace with a big crystal added at the end. When you're making your sun catcher, it's important to remember that you can be as creative as you like. For example, you don't have to use green stones. I like fall trees the best, so I did mine in red while Amy did hers in green. So let's get into the supplies you're going to need for the project. First, safety glasses. You want to make sure that you always have safety glasses on when you're working with your wire because it can spring back and hit you at any point, uh, especially when you're cutting. So I like to wear these 360 ones when we're cutting the wire just because it fully encases the eye and these ones are better for when you're wrapping. You're also going to need a ruler of some sort for all that measuring you're about to do. Okay, I'm going to take you through the rest of what you need for this project. For more about these tools, please check out our channel. Now on to the pliers. These are flush cutters. They are used to cut wire. Flush cutters have a flat side and a concave side. Use the flat side towards you and the concave side towards a garbage can or bin of some sort to collect the wire. The flat side here will create a nice flat cut. These are chain nose pliers. These pliers taper to a point. There are multiple widths available including slim pairs to fit your pliers into small spaces. These are similar to needle nose pliers, but there are no teeth. Round nose pliers. These are considered general use pliers for wire wrapping, but they have jaws that taper to a point. You can use them to create loops and jump rings. Flat nose pliers. These pliers have a smooth surface which prevents scratches and mars on the wire. We also use flat nose pliers to make bends and we can bend multiple wires at the same time. You can find most of these items at your local craft store thrift store, Amazon, or you can look around at what you have on hand to create your project. Choose a wire between 20 to 24 gauge. Although lots of craft wire works, I decided on this brand because it's ideal for non-precious metal wire wrapping since it can withstand twists and bends without breaking. You can really choose any color of bead or any type of bead you want, but beads with multiple sizes can allow you to fill up smaller spots so there won't be too many open spaces. I look for beads without cracks or chips, so they don't break when tightening the wire. You can even reuse any beads you already have on hand. I like to take apart old necklaces or bracelets I find secondhand and repurpose them into new projects. The crystals you choose are up to you. Today I'm using a crystal from a broken chandelier. These are often available at secondhand shops, or you can use one you have on hand from a broken light. Crystals that have faucets will reflect even more sunlight. You'll need a couple of rings or jump rings large enough to fit around your bangle. We need these to attach your crystal to the sun catcher, and you may need some to attach your sun catcher to the suction cup. I suggest buying suction cups that come in a variety pack. That way if your sun catcher ends up being on the heavy side, you'll have a larger one available to support it. This is totally optional. I buy estate and thrift lots of jewelry and I collect all the single earrings to reuse on new projects. The great thing about pegged earrings is they already have a sturdy wire attached to them to add to projects. You can see on this sun catcher I added a rose gold toned earring. It's not actual gold, but it matches my pink wire. 
If you need glue, I find the best glue to use is a slow drying two part epoxy, but E6000 works as well and it's readily available. If you want a quick drying glue, try Gorilla Super Glue Gel. For this project, of course, you'll need a bangle or bracelet. Any one will do as long as it's sturdy and round. As you can see, we've got a variety here. We got all of these second hands, so they're readily available anywhere you want to go, and you probably have some in your house right now. The first step is to measure out about 18 inches of wire. You can go with 16 inches, but you will need to use your pliers to pull the end of the wire instead of your hand to wrap the wire around the bangle. Now take your flush cutters and snip the excess wire. You'll want to measure and cut eight of these. And the wires don't need to be exact. The bangle I picked has a textured edge that makes it easier to hold the wire in place and since the textures are evenly spaced, it's easy to measure the distance between each wire. Bend the wire in half and wrap it around the bracelet about three to four times. This wire is soft enough you can use your fingers to wrap it around the bracelet. If you're using a harder wire, you can use your flat nose pliers instead. Make the wire fairly tight, or it will move around on you when you are twisting the trunk. Bring your wires to the opposite side. Take your next wire and do the same. You can use your pliers to secure the wires and make them sit snugly against the bracelet. We are using 24 gauge wire. Some of you may not know that gauge is a measurement of wire diameter. The higher a number is, the thinner the wire. The lowest I would recommend for this project is 20 gauge, if that's all you have on hand. You can spread out your wires more if you like. You don't want to go higher than halfway up the bracelet, or you risk not having enough room for the beaded branches. After you're done adding your wires to your bangle, you want to bring your wires as straight as you can to the opposite side. Once you have added all eight wires, gather all the wires together, straighten them, and twist them together by hand to form the trunk. If you find this hard to do with your hands, you can use your widest part of your flat pliers and securely twist all the wires together. Twist about halfway up. Next, take groups of four wires each and divide into branches. Twist the four wires to about one quarter of the space between the trunk and the edge of the bracelet and then take two wires and twist to about halfway between the trunk and the edge of the bangle. Do this to all of your wires. I use my pliers for this part. Be careful not to over twist as it can make the wires brittle and they can break. I have to be very careful with how hard I push the pliers together, as with softer wire you can nearly cut through the wires.
So if you don't want to twist the wires and create the branches like Amy's doing here, what you can do is take just a single wire and add larger beads. And this one was finished with an old earring that we found while at a thrift store in the center. Now you get to shape your wires into tree branches. If you want, you can take your beads to plan out where you want to add them, or just find the beads that fit the area as you go. Having multiple sizes of beads will help you fill every space. When you have enough beads on your wire, take your wire and wrap it around four or five times and make the bends around the wire as close together as you can. You can use your pliers to push them closer if you need to. Bring the wire around like this and cut it. If you are using small beads, you could bring this wire back and add more beads and then wrap it around the branch to secure the end. I'm doing the outside branches first so I can plan the spacing of the inside branches. A larger version of this could be made for wall art with a large ring used for dream catchers or macrame or macrame if you're in the UK. A neat fact about crystals is that the first man-made one was made in the 1800s and it shares virtually all the same characteristics as the natural ones. This is about halfway done. You want to make sure there is enough space for the center branches. If you like, you can loop the wire slightly looser in the center branches so you can adjust the spacing of the branches when you've finished your tree and then you can just use your pliers to squish the wire securely into place. The wires could be shorter here, but they would be more difficult to pull through by hand because the more you move the wire, the harder or stiffer it becomes. This is a pendant I made with the same subject matter and similar shaped stones. While this is a more elaborate version, you could take a large sturdy hoop earring and make a smaller version of the sun catcher instead. If you want to mix in clear crystals into your tree leaves right here, you'll get more reflections in the sun. Here's the finished tree. Now I'm going to add the finishing touches. I have my bag of single earrings and I'm going to find something that goes with this tree. These two might work. I'm going to take either this little flower and attach it here, or add this butterfly on the branch. If you're having trouble looping your earring around the wire, you can add some glue like this E6000. I'm going to use my round pliers and loop it around. Start by gently forming the peg of the earring around the tips of the pliers. Keep moving the pliers around the peg until you have a circle starting to form. Stop right before you have a complete circle so you can loop it over the wire where you want to attach it to. Feed the loop through the pliers until it becomes tight and doesn't move. Once you have the loop in place, you can use your flat pliers and flatten down the wire.
This is where I had to carefully pick beads with no cracks or chips, as when the wires are wrapped around the bangle, it puts pressure on the beads and it's easy to break the stones. I've definitely had my fair share of those while wire wrapping over the years. There we have our cute little butterfly added. I'm going to use this Celtic ring here to hang the sun catcher on the suction cup. Find the middle of the tree and attach the jump ring to the ring. You'll need a couple of rings or jump rings large enough to fit around your bangle. You don't need to attach a decorative ring here. You can just attach the bangle directly to the suction cup if you like. Now I'm going to attach a crystal at the bottom. I have this teardrop crystal from a broken chandelier. You can of course add any of these crystals but they would need to be attached with a piece of wire. You can loop the end of the wire by feeding the wire around the pliers. And then attach the other part of the wire to the bottom of the bangle. The crystal I'm using already has a jump ring on it, so open it up with two flat pliers. Find the middle of the tree, and with your two flat pliers, close it securely. And there you have it, your new sun catcher. Thank you for joining us for this tutorial. We hope you enjoyed it. For more tutorials and craft industry insiders, please check out our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.